25 ways dating has changed over the last 50 years. Some of it I didn't know. Some of it made me laugh. Some of it made me angry. But all of it makes sense of where we are today. Thank you for tuning into Second Act TV. I want to welcome Robert Manny back to Second Act. Robert, thanks so much for joining us again. My pleasure. Love to be here, Silka. <laughs> well, we love having you here. And if you have not seen Robert, he is the author of The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love. Great book. He's the host of Guy's Guy Radio and TV. We'll link to all of that. Robert, today, a conversation that's going to be a little different than what we usually talk about. And that is really a reflection on how did we come to where we are today in the dating world. And there was an article that I thought was so interesting that is 25 ways dating has changed over the last 50 years. So I, I read it and so much, it was just fun. So much of it made so much sense. Some of it I didn't know. Some of it made me laugh. Some of it made me angry. But all of it makes sense of where we are today. I agree with you. I read the article. I had a lot of different mixed emotions on it also. And a lot of things I was surprised about and some things I wasn't surprised about. But I think it's really a confluence of two areas. There's the, the, what's changed over the last 50 years and, and life itself is culture has changed as well as technology has changed. And then when you put them together, the how culture and technology have influenced each other right. has created even more change, and particularly in the area of dating and romance. So, so let's look at some specifics here. Uh, he breaks it down by the, the 70s, 80s, 90s, and what, and what those milestones were. And in the 70s, I'll, I'll kind of run them together. We can talk about it. But uh, the personal ads came about in the early 70s that prior to the 70s, you know, we were meeting through uh, introductions, friends, family, that sort of thing. And then in the 70s, that began to shift that began to shift and then like personal do you remember personal ads yes I do I mean I didn't really get involved in it it seemed yeah. like a, at the time like a, that's pretty desperate or whatever if they can yes. take out a personal ad um, but people did it the uh, the other big point is here they say the feminist movement changes priorities well I yeah absolutely uh, it's when casual dating became okay for women where there wasn't the emphasis on you go into a relationship for marriage only. And that's what's funny when I read that, what came to my mind, I remember in high school, I mean, 15, 16 years old, when I was dating, I would always, I didn't want to go out with anybody unless I thought I could marry them. What do you think? Okay. Uh, well, that's, that's you. I respect that. I didn't have the same opinion as a guy. But I think the the point about feminism really changed the game. And I think it did in a really good way. And for me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the advent of birth control really was the most empowering uh, change agent for women and for dating because women had control over their bodies and right. it changed the game completely and it empowered women in a really good way. Yeah, exactly. It, it says here, in 1972, the Supreme Court legalized birth control for every woman. Just even thinking about that, that was in our lifetime is, is, is like, whoa, really? <laughs> we lived in the Stone Ages. A couple other things he, he has on here for the 70s uh, that, that really shocked me, maybe, that same-sex and interracial couples were still not the norm. I say shocked because, again, this is in our lifetime, but that, that there were actually like anti-sodomy laws that were still on the books. And that it wasn't until, what, what did they say here, like the, the early 70s, that the first marriage license was issued for an interracial couple. It's shocking to think about that now, but yeah. I, I don't doubt that that was the case. Now, I don't know what states that was in, maybe some of the more uh, red conservative states. And you see what's happening now where things are getting rolled back mm. to the state level. So we're never... We're never completely out of woods out of the woods on this stuff. The uh, cu a couple of fun things here that that was very popular in the seventies. Hadn't thought about mixed tapes. <laughs> 
a oh, way yeah. of ex a, a expressing oh, yeah. your love, you know, uh, to someone by putting together a mixtape, and then uh, the love connection as it, it, the whole astrology thing that actually the hey baby, what's your sign? <laughs> was well, came from astrology that was go ahead yeah. well there's two you know there's two subjects there the uh, yeah. mixtape thing is like you know for a lot of people the, they lived through their music in that time frame in our generation i think particularly because there was so much great music back then it's yeah. a little different now the way music is made and what's popular and I think we had we were spoiled with so much terrific music back then. I, maybe I sound like a boomer now, but so be it. I mean, people are shelling out to see the Rolling Stones now and they're pushing 80. Uh, that's because the music was so good back then. Right. Um, so making a mixtape, if you're a young guy, you're taking all this time and you're thinking about the right songs to express how you feel about the, the girl at the time. And that's a nice thing, you know, how much that's going to do to a relationship or will you, will you get the girl because of that? I don't know. But it was a nice thing. I don't think a lot of I think it was more of a guy doing it for a gal. Uh, one thing uh, on the, the mixtape that's actually I read there was an article link there that it's actually coming back, that there's companies that are actually producing cassette tapes again. Though the other point was, yeah, the whole astrology thing astrology. that we 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 looked at what somebody's sign was to see if the, they were a good match. Well, I, I, I think that people are starting to consider that. And because it was new and uh, all of the information was new on the signs for a lot of people that they they took it a little more seriously um but i still think today with all of the our spiritual unfoldment work and all of the kind of metaphysical information that's out there now i think people are looking for an energetic connection and part of that they will factor in as one kind of spoke on the wheel the sign and say oh i'm a capricorn and she's an aries are we going to butt heads on this and you know what I have found over the years when I find out people's signs and all, all that, that people, particularly people I've dated or uh, and even my wife, oh, I understand where there's going to be some potential issues and where we're more simpatico. And I, I personally think there is some truth to it. So mm -hmm. some people take astrology more seriously than others. But I think the point is that trying to find the right, right vibrational fit uh, has actually gotten even bigger now than mm -hmm. it was then. I think it was just starting then. Yeah. And what's your sign has become way more than that. Are you vegan? Are you lactose intolerant? Are you a Trumper? I mean, it's so, all, so, all, yeah. so many ways of when we measure some of the uh, mm -hmm. background of our partners in terms of determining, yeah. uh, is this person right for me? I, I agree. I, I think there's a lot to it, too. And it's, and it's fun. <laughs> Let's move into the 80s. Uh, the concept of hooking up came about. The point that he makes here is that hooking up went from what used to be getting married, that you hooked up, now it was to jump in bed, you know, that, that the whole, our, our mindset has shifted. Well, I, I, I don't know if it started in the 80s. I think there was a lot of quote unquote free love, if you will, what they call it back in the late 60s and then throughout the 70s, it was pretty much mm -hmm. wild. And then in the 80s, the concept of, yeah, I can get together with somebody for a short period of time, and that and that's called hooking up. I don't think that's changed that much. I think that still happens. It's all about what the agreement is, whether it's spoken or unspoken between two people. Is this a one-night stand? Is this a hookup for a short period of time? Is this about hanging out? I mean, you know, look at how dating has changed, where the the formality of dating has been completely thrown out the window uh, for better or for worse and people mm -hmm. are like hang out together or do this or that or go out in a group and you know what happens silka in my opinion is that people don't change the values don't change but culture can change and the technology that allows us to do things differently and sometimes faster changes and when you put those together you can have a different environment. The uh, couple other things for the 80s that uh, safe sex, of course, became a key priority. We know all about that. That's when, uh, you know, AIDS, HIV and all that right. uh, started. Uh, in 87, the sales of condoms <laughs> rose by 33%. I thought that was interesting. The uh, Here's a, just another fun one. And I did not know this. I'm, I may put that into another video, actually, that poultry becomes a key ingredient on the marriage track that there was a red that women believed 
<laughs> there was a certain recipe. I, I don't remember this. They call it the uh, the now famous engagement chicken recipe. So I'll I'll link to that if you if, if you want to get engaged. <laughs> Let's move on to the 1990s. And the, uh, here is, I'm going to make a whole, I'm going to do a whole video on this actually with Treva. We already talked about it. A comprehensive guide helps women land Mr. Right. Now, I vaguely remember this because they were on Oprah. It was two women, Ellen yeah. Fine and Cherie Schneider wrote the book, uh, The Rules, Time-Tested Secrets for Capturing the Heart of Mr. Right. Do, of Mr. Right. Do you remember that book? I remember the book. Yeah, I don't remember exactly the content, but I remember it was uh, out there. It was very popular. Women talked about it. People talked about it over even business lunches and stuff. And it was it was a thing for sure. Yeah, it was it was Pound huge. Shine. It was a huge. Cult. It was a, a like I had a cult following. It was huge. And what it was is it was a, it was going back to the 50s. Basically, what was said is that women. Uh, you know, don't be a funny girl, uh, don't be chatty, men like quiet women. And there's an article that's, that links to it. Basically, you're going back to the 1950s. And it was, I mean, horrible, horrible advice. I, I Now that I think back on it, yes, I remember that. It was very conservative. But, you know, it always seems to be there's always a movement every so often to... Mm -hmm. a, a lot of women wanted to go back to the way things mm -hmm. used to be for whatever reason. Maybe things get too complicated or the the roles the definition of roles is, is too much you know our in our lifetime you look at this 50 years of dating so much has changed in our lifetime probably more things have changed in our lifetime and at any time in the history of humanity yeah other things took 300 400 years everything's happened so many things i mean a lot right. more to go but uh i think it's understandable that we're gonna there's always like maybe it was better the other way yeah look, look at maga Make America great again. Let's go back to the way it was. What, for whatever, some people mm -hmm. feel that there's more of a comfort level in mm -hmm. the way things were versus w the way way things are going. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. And and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole other conversation too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, the other notab uh, notable things here is that speed dating actually came on the scene. The first text was sent in the 1990s. And of course, the, the, the World Wide Web, you know, just changed, uh, opened up the doors to online dating. I didn't realize that speed dating that was actually developed, it says here, by a Los Angeles rabbi <laughs> who was looking to create simple ways for Jewish singles to meet. So the 90s really started giving way to finding people through technology and through through other forms. Any Anything you want to say about that? I think it's, it's true. It's all, you know, the speed dating was because uh, uh, for whatever reason the rabbi had, but I participated in it and... Uh, oh. It never, it, nothing positive for me ever came out of it because you'd sit across from somebody and be like, no, mm -hmm. or the other person would be like, no, and like, <laughs> when's my next one? And you're like, I want to meet her over there, and she's not in my queue for the speed dating. So I, I, that didn't really work for me. I think that was too random. But uh, obviously, online dating went with the advent of the computers and the personal devices became mainstream, and that changed everything because it's almost a you got to do it now if you want to be in it uh, to win it you know you can if you want to just meet people organically that's great mm -hmm. but you certainly have a pool of so many people that you would never have the opportunity of meeting that are available online you, you're going to have to go through the process you're going to have to learn how to manage it you're going to have to learn how to not get consumed by it and uh if you can manage all that stuff it can be very helpful. It's like technology. Can t technology can be your friend or your enemy, depending on how you learn to use it and, and weave it into your everyday life. Yeah, exactly. They they uh, say here too that uh, that Hollywood helped normalize all this uh, because there was there was hesitancy around it because you, you felt like there was something wrong with you if you if you went online like you didn't want you wanted to hide it and I, I was still like that uh, early on when I first started so I get it but the movie. Uh, the Tom uh, Hanks and Meg Ryan You've got, got mail, mail. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I that was a fun movie. I remember that. Well, let's move on to the to the twin. And I, this is something else I learned. Did you know that the two thousands were called aughts? Ox? No, a u g h t s. And for those uh, of you listening in 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 Great Britain, naughties. <laughs> 
<laughs> so here we're, we're now in the not. And that's why I, it's it's on wiki. It's on wiki. The, you know, look it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they, yeah, the um, well, technology gives rise to long distance relationships. That's another huge influence uh, on on how how we date. And then they said that uh, Facebook introduced digital flirting. That was actually in two hundred five with the the poke. Did you ever poke anybody? <laughs> I did not, and I've I've been poked, but I'm like I don't know what this is. What are you poking me? Just tell me what, what you want to say hello, whatever. And then I think everybody's experienced like weird people contacting them on Facebook or asking mm-hmm. random questions, and you're like, yep. is this really this beautiful woman from Shanghai, or is this some <laughs> some weird guy is asking you know questions like where are you from? Where it's like all over your profile, where you're from, that stuff like that. Um, so. The, the, the point, I think, is with the advent of technology, there was a lot more opportunities to meet yeah. people. And you're going to get more people just like anything else. You're going to get more good people and you're going to get more weird people. And it's just a matter of how you how you manage it. I think the key thing is, and I believe this is in the article, is getting over getting drenched by the online yeah. dating opportunities where you're in too many services. You're swiping too much. You're over dating. And you right. don't realize what why you know what happens. I find is people when they get into online dating, many of them just decide to figure it out as when they get on them there. They mm-hmm. don't ask themselves, "What do I want? Who am I? What do I have to offer? What's the type of person I want to connect with? What do I want out of this whole experience? Do I want a relationship? Do I want to get married? Do I want to just date? Do I want to just have fun? Or I don't know." But a lot of people get consumed by it. And uh, it turns out to be not a good thing. Whereas if right. you uh, semi present and mindful about it, you can hopefully make it work for you. Everybody's has horror stories about online dating, but yeah. you can't take it personally. And you yeah. have to take what you have to take personally is your grasp of the situation and say, okay, what is this tool? How can I make it work for me? Well, and they he goes into uh, you know a lot of what we cover on this channel anyway that you know ghosting became a term that is now in the dictionary the whole the whole catfishing that you know online dating uh, opened up where you prey on people's loneliness and emotions and and scam them you know we have tons of videos on that the one thing i didn't know i had no idea and this was i guess in the in the 2010s money sharing apps i have never heard this and this is as recent as 2010, it said, a new trend called rebating has emerged, whereby one person covers the cost of the date, but if the other person later expresses a lack of interest in pursuing the relationship, they get their money, uh, they get half the money back. <laughs> I have not, I have not heard hey, of this. you know, whatever, whatever works, but that's, it's like, you know, some people say when they go <laughs> on a date, it's like, they feel like they're being interviewed, it's yeah. strictly business, and, uh, the checklist and all of that. And the point is what happened to romance and right. dating should be a fun sport right. and you can take it any way you want. But when you get so into it, where you're deciding you're having trouble deciding the financial aspects of it and all of that, then it's like, I don't want to say it's right. overthinking, but where's the romance? Like, yeah. you know, it, to make it easy, go do something casual first, meet up, right. have coffee, have a drink, but meet in person. I think the biggest learning out of these 50 years, Silka, is that human nature hasn't changed that much. If you want to have a successful relationship and you want to use the technology tools and you want to factor in how culture has changed, people are still people. You're not going to make the real connection online. You're not going to make the real connection through texting. You're not going to make the real connection through swiping left or right. You're going to make the real connection when you meet in person. Even if right. for a short period of time, the energetic change will be there. You'll get a sense as to who the person is. And then you take it from there. Well, and, and you know, the article leads up to all that, that we've created an environment through technology and through cultural changes that is pretty, you know, people are getting sick and tired of this, that, uh, the, you know, the dating fatigue, uh, as you referenced. And the interesting part, and this article is actually published in 2020, so prior to COVID, that there was the trend already that we want to go back to a simpler time. That that we've realized that this this overwhelm is not good, and, and we want to focus, you know, and either on smaller groups or whatever. We don't want all these people on the internet, but focus in on just a few and spend time with them. 
or go back organically, that there's a, a, a real need and want to meet people in person. So anyway, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, there's a lot more in the article. I'll link to it. I think you'll, you know, our viewers will enjoy reading it as I did. Uh, is there anything else you want to leave us with on on this? Yeah, I mean, it's all good. Technology can be your friend if you if you manage it and don't let it overwhelm you. But if you if you don't really want to deal with all of that, well, maybe you join some groups, some meetup groups, or let's say you yeah. want to learn how to play golf. You take some, you know, group golf lesson, or you want to learn a language, you take a language class. I took language class. I met a lot of really cool people who were my age. They were smart, attractive, and we had fun. Um, there's so many classes you can take. There's so many groups you can join. So you, if you don't want to jump into the dating specific, right. then there's other ways of meeting people. But again, as I always say, you're going to have to meet the person face to face if you want to make a mm -hmm. real connection. And exactly. uh, that's a that's a good thing, I think. So just always yeah. be comfortable with who you are and what you have to say. And for guys out there, you know, you can sit around your tidy whities and you can <laughs> you can meet a lot of really beautiful women. But you know what? It's not going to happen unless you meet them in person and they vibe with your with your game and how you carry yourself and your confidence and not your arrogance, but your confidence and respect for yourself and for other people. If you're a good guy, if you're a guy's guy, there's never been a better time to be a guy than right now. Perfect. How can we end on a better note than that, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> we'll link to all of your information to your book, which which I love. I love this book. It, it reminds me, especially in summer, it's a great summer read. It's a summer read, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a great summer read. And of course, your radio show. So Robert, again, thanks. That was a fun conversation. I enjoyed it. Uh, talk you to too. you again soon on Second Act Thank TV. You. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. Just click on through to YouTube, and when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too. We'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.